Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is going to be a quick version and this is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining. Please subscribe to the channel and share this channel with your community. Like I said earlier, this is going to be a quick version. So if you prefer the full length, non time lapsed version, check out my Patreon page and my Paint with Lovejoy website. If you want to further support Paint with Lovejoy, please do. It all helps. And for more in-depth courses, check out paintwithlovejoy.com. And as always, share this with your community. All right, guys, it's going to be another fun painting, and this is a quick version. If you would like the full version, please check out my website or my Patreon page. And do not paint as fast as the quick version. So this one's a Happy Trees, no traceable. We're going to use yellow and white to create our horizon line. And then we're going to create an angled design above that horizon line. And then we're going to flip it below that horizon line. And I am using the yellow and white, making that space. Um, then we'll clean our brush and we'll be using a light pink. And if you're using student grade paint, I recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker. Um, it'll cover the texture of the canvas and it'll make your blending a little bit easier. So here I'm using that light pink that's white with a tiny amount of red. Um, you can overlap your yellow. It may create a kind of a really pretty orange color, or you can kind of um, buffer your area and not have them overlap. Totally your call. You also have full permission to switch out colors if you want to use something different. So now we're making that light blue. We're going to be basically filling in the remaining space of the canvas. Same thing, you can overlap this with a little bit of that uh, pink and create a slight purple um, and just apply your paint thicker to make it easier to blend. Now we will be using this shade of blue and going over that full horizon line um, by the time we get to the next step. And as you're mixing your colors, if you have to mix a second or third time and maybe it's lighter or darker, totally okay. Just embrace that. I'm really glad that you are just taking time out of your day, getting creative, spending some time with yourself, and transforming this canvas into something you created. I am very proud of you. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. I did let this dry, and we're moving into a light gray. We're going to reapply that horizon line, and then we're going to start putting some mountains in there. And as you go through this video, do not paint as fast as the video. Take your time and you're going to be strengthening your power of observation. I want you just to see where I place that, mimic it to the best of your ability on your canvas, feel free to make any changes that you are inclined to make, and just have fun while you're painting. So you saw where we added the white, now we're going in with the gray, kind of placing it in a few areas. We're going to wipe that brush off and then we'll kind of blend that into the base. Then we'll do the same thing again with um, some of the black paint and a smaller brush. And this is not about being perfect, but just getting a little bit more comfortable with your school, uh, with your skills and your tools. And with each painting, you get better and better and more comfortable. So same thing here, we went with a darker gray, smaller brush, placing it in a few areas. Um, if you need to wipe that brush off, you can go back and kind of squish it in. Then we're gonna add a little bit of shading and some trees some foliage on our horizon line. So still using that medium flat brush and black paint now, a lot bolder. And these are just little daubs. They don't have to be perfect. It's just the illusion that we've got some trees in that horizon line. Um, pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna move into green next, and that is yellow and green. Your call, how yellow or how green? If you don't have green, you can make your own by mixing yellow and blue. And we're going to put some of our land shapes on here um, because the below the horizon line, that is going to be our water area. And then we're going to have our happy trees coming out from these little islands. And like I said earlier, if you're mixing your color and maybe one time it's dark, more green, the other time it's more yellow, just embrace that. That's okay. You have full permission to just use this as a guideline, but make it your own and deviate from what I'm doing. All right, and if you're on a stretched canvas, I do recommend carrying these colors around the edges. It just looks nice. If you're on a flat panel or paper, just disregard what I just said. 
<laughs> All right, so another place to pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to move into black paint. We're using that small pointy brush, and we're going to put some tree trunks back on that um, foliage area at the horizon line. And then we'll just do little dots um, for the uh, branches on the tree. They do not have to be perfect, just a little hint, and our brain is going to go, yep, those are trees back there by the horizon line. We will get a little bit more specific with our tree application when we move into the foreground and move into the bigger trees. All right, doing a great job. Remember to breathe and do not paint as fast as the video. All right, so moving back up to that big brush, we're still using the black paint. We're going to put our uh, tree trunks in and you are more than welcome to paint as many or as few trees as you want in your uh, composition. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. So once we've got those tree trunks on there, I'm still using that same brush, but kind of using the corner of it as I start on that top area. And these are going to be smaller branches kind of flaring out. And then they're going to get bigger and wider as you get towards the base of the tree, towards the bottom um, of where the tree is coming out of the ground. Take note of how often I'm going back and grabbing more paint. This is not a race, so take your time. Um, and it doesn't have to look perfect. I want you to do three or four trees and then take a break and get out of your chair, step back about five or 10 feet and look at it from a distance. And they will tend to look a bit more like a tree or a forest area from that distance compared to how close you are when you paint it. When you're looking at it from that distance, if you go, oh, I need a little bit more foliage here, go back and apply that. Use that distance as your kind of communication of how your painting's coming along and the places you might need to add or change things. Trust your instincts. All right, so getting those trees on the left-hand side, and then we do have a few more in the foreground that we'll be adding, so this is all great practice. And I do recommend that you do this painting a couple of times, maybe in a month from now, do it again, and a year from now, do it again. And it's one of the times that you can see how much you've grown from today's painting to when you paint it in the future. And that's a really satisfying thing to do. And it's good motivating factor to keep you painting and keep trying new things. Because um, it's not about being perfect, but it's about just getting more comfortable, maybe taking a break from your stressful life and doing something creative. But it's about you spending time with you and transforming this blank surface. All right, so now we're going back in with that brush. We're using some horizontal lines in our water area, and this would indicate that we have a reflection of the trees and the grass and the foliage and the sky on our water. So just getting some of those lines, again, strengthening your power of observation as you watch where I place something and then mimicking that to the best of your ability. Now we're going back to that green, and that is the yellow and green combo. Um, Adding a little bit more to the islands. You can add some raw sienna and green. It makes it a little bit earthier. But it's going to be a similar application that we did to the trees. So holding that brush perpendicular, kind of tapping it on there, creating this foliage space. Um, and then we'll be applying some more colors on top of it. So layering acrylic paint is a really nice thing about uh, creating depth in your paintings. So now we're going to a green and black mixture, heavier on the green compared to the black. Same thing, getting a shadow element in there for the foliage, um, tapping, holding that brush perpendicular, tapping to the canvas, twirling the brush, tapping again, and it creates just a really nice texture on your painting. All right, so same thing, clean that brush. We're going to go back to yellow green with more yellow. We're going a little bit lighter. And again, just up by applying that, you can see how much that lighter color pops forward and the darker colors kind of push back. Again, a little bit more noticeable when you look at your painting from that distance. And then maybe try adding a little bit more yellow, a little bit brighter for a few of those spots. If you want to go back and add more green, again, trust your instincts um, for what you might be inclined to add. And here I'm making my own green by adding a little bit of the yellow and the uh, blue. And now going back into the trees, we're leaving that black that we put on the base, but same application and just getting some greenery on the trees. And this is giving us some nice depth by putting it on top of the black. We're going to do this again later on 
um, towards the end of the painting with a lighter color. And that gives us again, more depth. So as you are painting this, you are a magician creating the illusion of a 3D image on a flat 2D surface. And by doing these layers and going dark to medium to light, that's what's creating that illusion. All right, so pause the video, clean your brush, take your progress photos. We're going to go in with a light blue, and that is white and blue, and going to our water area and doing these horizontal lines. And as you do these lines, I want you going over all the colors um, from where the water is. And by going over the shadow elements, going over the reflections of the sky and the tree, um, that's what's creating the illusion and giving the distinction that this is water and that the top part of the canvas is the sky. Another good thing to look at your painting from a distance. So we've done this with the light blue. I just now did it with the white and now we're going back in with the blue. So feel free to kind of switch between all three of those shades of blue as you're putting your water ripple lines um, in your water. Um, you can have a bit of movement to these lines. I personally like a calm water, so that's why mine are pretty horizontal. But if you want a little more movement in your water, you can kind of wiggle your brush um, and make a bit more movement. Totally your, um, your call for making that. All right, so clean that brush, go back and add a few more highlights. We are in the home stretch of today's painting. And like I said, this is a time-lapse version if you prefer the real time version, check out my website um, and my Patreon page. So now going back to that foliage with a little bit more of the yellow compared to green, going back into those trees for a few highlights, um, down to the foliage on the ground, trust your instincts on where you might want to apply this. And the more that you trust your instincts, the more they're going to show up for you um, and the easier it is to trust them. So going in, same thing on the foliage, you can add some raw sienna, makes it a bit earthy, anything that you might want to add. If you want to go in with more green, um, if you want to put a little fisherman silhouette on there, if you want to put a fish jumping out or birds in the sky, anything you might want to do to your painting. So last step, going in with that white um, for those water lines. And again, it just kind of gives one more pop, that pure white, that pigment on there uh, kind of jumps forward where the other colors will push back a little bit more. So thank you guys so much for getting creative and taking time out of your day to have fun. Please don't wait too long to do your next painting. It gets better and more comfortable and more fun. So until next time, cheers.